let me say it in a way you can understand it even better. If you'll read the Bible every day, you'll make more money. Can you understand what I'm saying? There is a spirit of prosperity that comes upon you because you begin to think like God thinks. God didn't get up this morning wondering how he's going to feed the fish. Do I have enough fish food? Gabriel, uh, check, 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 uh, check about the bird feed. Do I have enough uh, feed? To, well, no, God didn't do that, and you won't either. God will release the money. God, there's a confidence that God is going to supply all of your needs. Jesus. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change. Welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers from Louisville, Kentucky. And I want to say that I believe that this is going to be one of the best weeks that you've ever had. And the reason is, is because God is sending a move of the Holy Ghost. I believe within the next two weeks, you're going to see something fresh and, and new that's going to breathe upon our churches. I believe during this Easter season, we're praying that for the, you will have the greatest Easter encounter that you've ever had in your life. We got closed down last year, but praise God, churches need to be open. And they need to be open for a special, powerful Easter service. And this is going to be a healing time for you and for your family. I have the book that I want to send to you, the New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs. Uh, this will be a great blessing to you. you. It's very difficult to even find a New Testament. And uh, this one is very thin. It's very nice. It has uh, not only uh, the New Testament, but it has Psalms and Proverbs. I love Proverbs. I read a proverb every day. So whatever the date is, I read that proverb. It's, if it's the 5th, I read the 5th proverb. If the date's the 14th, I read the 14th proverb. So uh, the information on how you can receive it is right there on the screen. And for your love gift of $39, representing the 39 stripes of Christ, I want to send this to you, and uh, it, it will be a blessing. But right now, let's go into our service. Take your Bible and hold it high. If you don't have a Bible, hold up your hand. Everyone say with me, this is the Word of God, and I believe it's true. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. This is a road map. It shows me how to get to heaven. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do, and I can be what it says I can be. Today I shall hear the Word of God, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by God's Word, in Jesus' name. Turn with me, please, to the book of Hebrews. Remain standing in honor of God's Word. In Hebrews chapter 4, I want to begin reading in verse 12, Hebrews 4, 12. Would you say that, please? Hebrews 4.12. In Hebrews chapter 4, in the 12th verse, is one of the most electrifying scriptures that I know of. Hallelujah. I know my Bible's got this scripture in it. I read it earlier. Are you ready? Would you read it with me, please? For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Father, anoint your word with great power in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. I'm the son of a pioneer Pentecostal preacher. I've lived above the church, below the church, in front of the church, and in back of the church. In church, uh, being a part of a, a preacher's family, I've met pastors, I've met evangelists, I've met, I've met them all. 
And I've seen everything you could almost see happen in a church. You see it. 99.9% .9 of the preachers are as honest and have sacrificed and they're people of honor. There's some bad eggs in all the groups, but I'm here to tell you, uh, preachers, most of them that I've ever known, have really been people of God. But in a, a full gospel church, where you talk about the Holy Spirit, a lot of times people, they uh, want to be uh, yield to the Holy Spirit. I want to yield to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes uh, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit are awesome. When I was a kid, we had a Baptist lady who had received the Holy Spirit, baptism, and uh, buddy, she could shout. And when she began to shout, the bobby pins began to fall out of her hair. And we would sit there and count the bobby pins, and we'd say, I bet, it there, I bet she'll, uh, she'll, she'll lose 10. No, she's going to lose 20. And we observed all of that. And many times when you come out of a background like that, you, uh, sometimes people think, well, if you don't see those manifestations, it must not, God must not have shown up. My grandmother was out of the Methodist church, and she was a very fine woman of God, and she received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And her Methodist circuit rider would come through. Uh, it was twice a month, and then he got where it was once a month. And uh, when she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, she was slain in the Spirit, and they had to carry her home in a buckboard. She had angel talk. They called it angel talk. She could not speak in English for a long period of, hour, uh, of, of time. It was hours and hours. And so when the Methodist preacher came, he said, we're not going to have that in this church. We're not going to have that kind of demonstration. And so these people that had received the Holy Spirit, they were pushed out of the church. But what happens, uh, we thank God for the fire, but if that's all you've got and you don't have any word, then you blow up. You get off into crazy things. You, uh, you have the fire and no word. You blow up. You have the word and no fire. You dry up. And if you have the fire and the word, you grow up. And so many times people who've been around such electrifying moves of God, they think that if I don't feel something, then God must not be hearing me. But that's not true. Because you see, the word of God never changes. It's not moved by how you feel. It's not moved because you're having a bad hair day. It's not moved by Holy Ghost goosebumps. The Word of God is the Word of God. And it never changes. But the Holy Spirit anoints God's Word. And when it does, it becomes alive. It becomes alive like you've never experienced something before. It'll talk to you. It, the largest library in the world is the Library of Congress. It claims uh, to have over 130 million items on approximately 530 miles of bookshelves. The collections include 29 million books and other printed materials, uh, 3 million recordings, 12 million photographs, 5 million maps, and 58 million manuscripts. Yet none of those books, none of those manuscripts are alive. They're words on paper. None of them can claim to do what God's Word does. It's alive and full of power. It's the living Word of God. It's called the rhema. You read it and suddenly it jumps alive in your heart. And suddenly you believe that you could do whatever that Word declares you could do. So you take that word and you use it as a pencil and you draw that promise around you. All the way around you, 360 degrees, and you stand on the inside of that promise. And you don't come out of that promise. You don't come out of that circle until God brings it to pass. Till God saves your family. Till God heals your body. 
until God releases the income, until God answers your prayer. It's based upon the power of the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the rhema Word of God. Not the logos, it's the rhema Word of God. We read here, the Word of God is quick and powerful. The word quick is alive. It's a rhema. It gets in your spirit, and it begins to burn in Jesus' name. Gypsy Smith was a great evangelist, and he told, it was told of a man who had received no inspiration from the Bible, though he had gone through it several times. And he says, well, let it go through you once, then you'll have a different story. But when you begin to read the Bible and you read the book of Genesis, it tells of your origin. It speaks of marriage. In Matthew 19, it says, man was made from the beginning, male and female. And for this cause shall a man cleave to his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. It says a man shall leave his father and his mother. It doesn't say the wife has to leave her parents. And 80% of the folks live where mama lives because she knows how to help raise kids. She knows how to teach her daughter to uh, take care of those little ones. The Word of God says in Matthew 24, But as the days of Noah's were, so also the coming of the Son of Man be. It teaches to honor your father and your mother, the moral laws, the laws of society. Not to kill, not to steal, not to lie. It talks about warm, a global warming. As long as the earth remaineth, there is seed time and harvest. There is cold and heat. There is summer and winter. And there is day and night, and it shall not cease. It teaches about judgment in the story of Sodom. And it teaches about reward in the family of Noah, who lived a righteous life. I made a vow that never would a day pass I would not read the Bible. I remember I was in my 20s when I made that vow, and I got me a children's Bible because it seemed like I could understand that better. It was really a living Bible. It was like reading the newspaper, and it became so alive inside of me that I felt like maybe God had a call on my life. And that's when I began to answer the call into the ministry. It came after I began to immerse myself in the Word of God. And I made a vow that every day I'd read the Bible, and I've kept that vow. I've read it from cover to cover over 70 times. There's times I've read 30, 40, 50 chapters in one day. There's other times I've read just verses, but I've read the Bible every day. I read in the book of Proverbs an amazing thing. It says it, it was meant for three reasons. Number one, to teach a young man discerning ways, which means about sex. You want to learn about sex? Don't uh, listen to all those boys and those fellows whispering. Read the Bible. It, uh, it tells that if you are uh, faithful to your wife, it's like eating filet mignon. But if you're unfaithful to your wife, it says you become as a morsel of bread. It's bread and water, folks, but your wife is filet mignon. It talks about how to become wise, to navigate life's, uh, life's problems. It comes from Proverbs. It talks about how to be a leader. It will make a wise man even wiser. It says if you'll read the book of, of, uh, and get wisdom, it says you'll have a long life. That means the years you live. You'll have a good life. That's a quality life. And you'll have peace, which is prosperity. So when you simply read the Bible, something powerful happens. And I started reading Proverbs. I've read it over 500 times. I read it every day. Whatever the date is, if the day's the fourth, I'll read the fourth chapter of Proverbs. And it, it helps you to understand how to get along with people. But I want to share with you, especially young people today, five things that if you'll just read the Bible every day, these five things will happen to you. The first is God releases an anointing of increase. 
Now, let me say it in a way you can understand it even better. If you'll read the Bible every day, you'll make more money. Can you understand what I'm saying? There is a spirit of prosperity that comes upon you because you begin to think like God thinks. God didn't get up this morning wondering how he's going to feed the fish. Do I have enough fish food? Gabriel, uh, check, check, check about the bird feed. Do I have enough uh, feed? Well, no, God didn't do that, and you won't either. God will release the money. God, there's a confidence that God is going to supply all of your needs. In Joshua 1, 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. That means you speak it. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That means you think it. That thou mayest observe to do all that's written therein. That means you do it. For then, say then. then. You speak, you think, you do. Then, says you will find uh, good favor and success and, and prosperity. For then thou shalt find I forgot how it says. But you shall find, uh, what does that say? Then you shall find good understanding. Help me out here. You can't think of it either. I have it either. Then, hallelujah, praise God. Joshua 1.8, I'm going to read it here. It says, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success and uh, and uh, that happens simply from reading the Bible. Did you know success? That's the only time it's recorded in the Bible. And it's recorded about when you read it. John Knox, he was from Scotland. He got a job as a bodyguard, which meant he probably was a pretty tough guy. This uh, preacher was a reformer, and people tried to kill him. So he had to have people to protect him. Well, the reformer was caught. He was burned at the stake. And John Knox, because he worked for him, ended up going and they put him on a prison boat. He worked there for three years. But when he got through all of that, God called him to preach. And so he came back to Scotland. And in those days, Scotland was the poorest of all of the countries. It was the poorest country in Europe, the poorest country in Great Britain. It would be like living in a a coal town up in Appalachia that doesn't have any electricity. That's what Scotland was all about. The Church of England denied the right for anybody to read the Bible. The fact is, if you tried to read it or you could quote the Bible, in many cases, you were put to death. You were executed. And so they said you have to be learned and educated to understand the Bible. But not uh, John Knox. His message was it's so easy, so under, to understand that anybody can understand the Bible. So when he would start a church, he would also start a school. He wouldn't start a church without starting a school, and the textbook was the Bible. And so you were taught to read and write and memorize the Scriptures. And as you begin to do so, it begin to have a radical effect upon the country of Scotland. There was a total change in 50 years. And then in another 50 years, it, they begin to take what they have learned and the blessings, and they begin to export it throughout the world. When I talk about what happened was this. It began to produce prosperity, scholarly, it began to, um, it became a hub for the medical and financial hub of the world. Alexander Fleming, who invented pen penicillin, he was a Scot. Uh, Scotland produced more Nobel Peace Prize winners than any other country in Europe. Uh, the founder of the Bank of England, he was a Scot. Robert Louis Stevenson, John Burns, 650 other authors, poets of renown. They all came from Scotland. And then their contribution to America was unbelievable. Many of the writers and signers of the Constitution, they were, they were from Scotland. Eleven presidents came from Scotland. 
Woodrow Wilson's father was a Presbyterian preacher. And when they came here to this country from Scotland, his son made a, co a commitment to God every day to read the Bible. Woodrow Wilson, he rose to be the president of the United States. Medicine, it was amazing. Uh, medicine, uh, uh, the Scot, how they taught it, taught healing, it came not just through the body, but also through the mind. In those days when George Washington was here in America, they estimate between 3,500 and 4,000 doctors were in America, and only 350 to 400 had uh, a medical license, and they were 100% from Scotland. And so it became a center for health and strength. And, and then financially, look, look what they produced. Andrew Carnegie, he came here without any money, just as a kid, but he read the Bible. Became the richest man in the world, founded U.S. Steel. There was Thomas Edison, Alexander Hamilton, Stonewall Jackson, John Breckinridge, Washington Irving, who wrote Ichabod Crane and Rip Van Winkle and other books. What happens is the Word of God made Scotland become the most prosperous place on the globe. And it'll make you prosper. It'll make your sons and your daughters successful. Simply the Word of God. Secondly, it'll make you a leader. It'll make you rise to the top. Proverbs 16, 16 says, How much better than fine gold is the acquisition of wisdom. And the acquisition of understanding is more choice than silver. The Bible is to be chosen over gold. It is to be chosen over great wealth. You can take a, a young man who graduates from Harvard University. He can have all the education. He can have all the understanding. But if he can't get up and go to work, if he is not honest, if he doesn't have integrity, he is not as good as someone with a high school education that will get there early and leave late, who won't call in sick but crawls in sick, someone that's honest, someone that you can depend on. I'm here to tell you without the Bible, our democracy cannot exist. We are made, this a democracy is made for honest people and for people whose strength is based upon the Word of God. There was a man who came to our church. He couldn't read or write. Fact is, uh, he married a girl who was a fine Christian girl, but he had terrible dyslexic uh, problems, and uh, he could not read. And uh, he came, and one night God filled him with the Holy Spirit. And uh, he said, God, I want you to help me to read. And he got the Bible, and uh, he began to get, uh, a, there was a, a fellow who used to read the Bible, Alexander Scorby. And he would read the Bible, and he began to learn to read and write by listening to the book of Romans. And uh, he got where he became very successful. He started his own business. That business has prospered, has been successful. The fact is, it's real hard to even get him anymore because he has so many clients. We have a young man who works here at the church. He could not read or write in the fourth grade. He could not even spell his name. And he began to come here, his family. And my mother, my mother prayed for him one day, God, heal Trey. And did you know God not only healed him by the end of that semester in school, he could read, he could write. He went on to college. He graduated from college. Today he's very successful I'm here to tell you it's the Word of God that will change everything in your life. Come on, can I hear an amen? You say, Pastor, sometimes we have to defend the Word of God. I don't have to defend the Word of God, just like I don't have to defend a tiger shark. I don't have to defend a lion or a bear. God's Word can defend itself. 
and those who've laughed at the word of God. Look at them. Look at Adolf Hitler. He's not laughing now. Where's Goliath? I don't hear his laugh. Where's Pharaoh? He's at the bottom of the Red Sea. Where's Joseph Stalin? He is one of the, he, he's dead. They're all dead. But look around those who believe God's word. They will endure forever in the name of Jesus. God's word will prosper you. God's word will make you at the head and not the tail. God's word will heal you. Raise your right hand. Say there's healing. Say there's healing in the word of God. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto thy sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. That word health comes from the same word where medicine comes from. In other words, God's word becomes a medicine. Did you know medicine is no respecter of persons? Medicine, you can take it if you're black, you can take it if you're white, you can take it if you're uh, from Asia, you can take it if you're from Europe. It has, it's no respecter of persons, and neither is God's word, hallelujah. When you begin to read the word of God and speak the word of God, results begin to happen. Things begin to change. But it has to be taken according to the, the directions. You just can't take medicine anytime you need it. I was talking to a doctor. He said, now, you've got to take this every day. I said, well, what if I take it every other day? He said, it won't work. You've got to take it every day. Well, it's the same with the Word of God. You've got to follow the directions. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. I want to pray for you. I invite you to stop whatever you're doing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your anointing your powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit. I bind every demon, every devil, every power, every principality, every spirit of suicide, spirits uh, that would bring poverty. I curse COVID. I curse weakness off of you. In Jesus' name, be set free and be made whole in Jesus' name. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, today. Uh, we'll be coming back next week at the same time, but I want to mention... I have the New Testament uh, with Psalms and Proverbs that I want you to have. It's very rare that you can even find a, a New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs in it, especially this nice. And uh, for your love gift of $39, representing the Easter time of 39 stripes of Christ, we'll be glad to rush it to you. That information is right there on the screen. God bless you, and thanks for viewing today on Word Alive understand what the will of the Lord is. If we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.